Hello and welcome to tutorial 157 and in this tutorial we're going to be using a form to import a large number of symbols into the program. We're going to do a simple analysis for that uh, for, for the various symbols and then we're going to include the symbols in the data grid if in this case if a low pivot has occurred. So uh, let me demonstrate what I'm going to do is click the button like so. What this is doing is importing the symbols and we've got 500 symbols in a text file into a token list. The program then for each of those elements in the token list creates a price series provider and then it runs the analysis on the price series provider to see if a low pivot has occurred and if one has what it does it adds the symbol name to the grid. It also includes the uh, the interval high low which will be minus one and the pivot price now this takes a, a few seconds so what i might do is just speed it up a little bit and there you can see the uh, the symbols beginning to appear in the grid so why might this be potentially useful? Well, for example, say you were analyzing a large number of symbols, but you didn't really want to have radar screen calculating away all day because you only needed to do that calculation at a specific time. Or perhaps you didn't want to use a scanner. One of the, uh, one of the advantages of this approach is we can click that button mid bar and do the calculation on what the uh, uh, effectively the close, uh, if we're using close, would be at that specific time. A major advantage though of radar screen and scanner is that we can use regular uh, indicators or show me studies whereas with this approach what I've had to do is modify the calculation to use a price series providers. Now this can be particularly difficult when you're using cumulative values for example uh, an exponential moving average so you need to be uh, be aware of that. So in this tutorial we're going to be looking at forms going to be looking at stream reader, token list, dictionary and uh, price series providers and I will make this program available at no additional cost to Gold Pass members. So let's uh, let's go into the program and uh, just going to ignore the variables and inputs for the moment. We've got the namespaces included there. Let's just get into the program. Now, now in terms of the form what I did is if you right click the trading application. This is a trading application, by the way. So um, to create that, you would go into, uh, you go file, new, and then you choose trading app. Once you've created your trading app, if you right click, you can say add form. Now we've already got a form attached to this program. And uh, we can see that by going here in the resource view. And uh, you can see the form there. And if I right click at that, I can delete it. Or if I uh, double click on that, we should be able to see the form. So there we have the form and this was created using uh, the toolbox. And what I did was I added a button and I added a data grid view. And then if you wish to modify over those, either of those, for example, the, uh, the button, you would click on the button, then go to properties and you could for example, change the name or rather the text, text, uh, test symbols, uh, etc. Now, as far as the data grid's concerned, what we do need to make sure is that we have the correct number of columns for data we're going to add. So if we go to properties and you'll see here collection, if we click on the little ellipsis there next to the collection, then you'll see that we've got uh, four items here and you can add new ones by clicking add. Um, for example, like so, and uh, remove them also. And uh, you can, for each one of these, you can change their, uh, their names, descriptive names, etc. But we, you do need to make sure that you've got four of those for the program, uh, because the, the program will be putting information into four columns. Okay, so having done that, let's look at the, um, oh, one, one final thing. With the, uh, the button, we want something to happen if we click the button. So in this case, you would go to properties, then to events, and then double click here uh, in the 
blank space next to click. And what that will do is in your program, you will now have a method for the button click. And what we're going to do in that method uh, is we're going to clear the print log. We're going to do a little bit of printing, but what we're going to do mostly is uh, create the token list using data from the text file. And we're going to create the price series providers. Now, in terms of using the stream reader, what I suggest you do is let's go to quick tip 37, which uh, uses the stream reader to import some symbols into another program, which is actually doing optimization, but that goes through that process. Having done the stream reader, we've now got all the symbols into the stream reader. We create a new dictionary and then we add to the dictionary with the uh, symbol name, which is stored in the token list, which I've called TL as the index. And for the value, we've put in the price series provider. Now we do that using another method that uh, we're going to use here, which is create price series provider. And we're doing that for, again, the symbol name. So let's have a look at that, uh, that method. Now, the, the guts of this can be, uh, can be got by going into toolbox, then double clicking on price series provider. So we'll just create another one, which we can delete in a moment. And then if you go to view designer generated code, you're going to see a lot of designer generated code about the form that we're not going to be too concerned with. But what you will also see down here is designer generated code for the price series provider, along with all the syntax and so forth. And you can copy and paste that into the main program. We're not going to be using price series provide one because we've already got our price our price series provider. This is a method which returns a price series provider and has one input for a string, which is going to be the symbol name. And we use that here, psp.symbol equals sim. In terms of the number of bars back, I don't really need many in this program. So I've just asked or 10 and uh, we don't need volume or ticks. We're going to load the PSP. And uh, what we do need is a state changed update event. And again, you can get that if you go back to toolbox, create a price series provider, and then go to the events, the little lightning uh, symbol and uh, click on that in the appropriate place. Then you'll get the syntax for creating the state change. So that creates the price series provider. Now, when the state changed, what we're looking for is the price series provider has been loaded. And this is where things can get a little bit tricky with the price series providers, because oftentimes you might try to do something to them before they're loaded. So we need to make sure that they're loaded. And rather than making sure that we've loaded all of them, what I'm doing here is when each individual price series provider is loaded, in other words, the state changed has changed to two, it's loaded, then we know we can do our calculation. And we do that by storing the price series provider into a variable PSP. And then we process that PSP using yet another method. This method is called DG add row. So here is the, the method DG add row. We're processing the price series provider. We do a little bit of simple uh, analysis here. We're saying is the low three bars ago less than the lows on either side of it. If it is, we set high low to minus one. Uh, if high low is minus one, then we're going to add a row to the grid and um, where the, 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 um, the syntax for that is DGV. That is the name that we gave when we set up the, uh, the data grid using the, um, the toolbox. And we're just going to add the, uh, the, the symbol name, the interval minus one and the PSP low, which will be the low of the pivot. Now, incidentally, we could have used the following syntax using set cell, but if you do use that, then the values have to be converted into strings. So this one is probably easier and uh, and more useful. So that will add the values. And then finally, right at the beginning of the program, we need to show our form so that we can uh, we can click the button when we wish to do so. So now, as I mentioned, 
One of the huge advantages of the radar screen and scanner approach is you can use the standard indicators, show me studies, etc. In this one, we're doing very simple analysis. And if we were to do an analysis where we needed the value of a bar carried forward, then things become uh, more complicated. But uh, for a calculation like this, this is uh, relatively straightforward. Anyway, uh, again, what I will do is make this program available at no cost, no additional cost to Gold Pass members. If you haven't subscribed to the Markplex YouTube channel, then please do so. And uh, also our email list, because not everything is necessarily posted as a YouTube video. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, hope you found this useful. Thank you.